Hi, gorgeous. A dollar donation supports our safe station. If you're enjoying my work, check a Patreon perk. Hi there, gorgeous. I oh no, <laughs> fine. I just forgot. I was a wolf for a minute. <laughs> Still a wolf, still a wolf. Oh, no, I think a part of me too was kind of hoping that I would wake up human. Uh, here we are. I hope you slept okay. Did you sleep okay beside me? I hope I didn't claw on my sleep or something. <laughs> no. I actually slept really, really well. Yeah. Really, really well. peaceful with you. I know I told you that last night, but I mean it. When you're a wolf, you can... Your hearing is exceptional. I can hear from a mile away and my sense of smell is outrageous. I can tell you what your neighbors are cooking right now. Oh yeah, they're frying up steak. Um, it's not excellent, but they're doing the best they can. Anyhow, you know, it's... It's just a lot of stimulus and, you know, generally that's cool. If you're only turning into a wolf once a month, you know, you learn to manage your expectations and look forward to the excitement of it all. You consider it playtime, right? But, you know, this is the longest I've ever been in this form. And so it was beginning to get overwhelming and... Now that I'm with you, I feel much better. Thank you. It's very, very sweet of you to let me stay. Wow, we really covered quite a bit last night. <laughs> I, you know what? That was our first relationship talk, I think. Not that, or, you know, I don't mean like, I don't mean like a relationship relationship, but I mean, you know how it is, any human bonds are relationships. <laughs> I don't want to scare you with that statement. But we do make a pretty good team. Speaking of which, I thought about thought about our conversation about trying to figure out what's happened to me, getting to the bottom of it, talking to people, etc. And how much, how comfortable on a Speaking of comfort, <laughs> give me a second. Well, I just need to shift. I just need to shift positions. I need to stretch. Mm. Mm. Okay, that's better. Thank you. Anyhow, like I was saying, <laughs> I, mm, I just have four legs, and they all stretch out and. It's, annoying. Anyhow, I thought about it. I think, well, first thing I'm going to do, first things first, um, I'm going to talk to a friend of mine. My friend is a witch and she can do a very simple spell that will be able to define, well, she'll be able to tell whether or not I've been cursed. So, it's super easy. I, I've never had it done myself, but she's told me all about it. And a lot of people go to her for exactly this. And most witches can do this practice. It's, from what I understand, it's, it's simple, painless, and you receive immediate results. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And I, I do trust her. I think you can absolutely come with me to see her. And I think it could be exciting for you to learn about that whole part of my supernatural world that I'm a part of as well. And yeah, we can make a date out of it. <laughs> you got, you can ask her any questions. She's very, very sweet. You know, she, she's got to be protective. She has to be a lot of people 
would abuse her gifts. A lot of people would take advantage of her kindness and her power, but you're with me and we really like each other. So I think you two would get along famously and that could be a lot of fun. And hopefully, I mean, who knows? Maybe it's if I have been cursed, sometimes you can shed a curse without confronting the source. Sometimes, you know, she's told me stories of sending people to take a salt bath <laughs> or having people chant affirmations, etc. I mean, it's very possible there's a simple quick fix. But that does feel pretty optimistic considering the fact that, you know, what's happening to me being stuck between human communication and wolf form, that is unique. So I assume we're dealing with something or somebody more powerful than all of that, but we're getting ahead of it. We're getting ahead of myself. First things first, we talked to her and you're more than welcome to come with me. But if, okay, so let me explain myself. I, I think you'll we're going to come to an understanding. So let's say I brought you with me to go sleuth out some of the darker witches. And I don't mean dark as far as witchcraft is concerned. I mean, dark in personality. I mean, some of the more self-serving, unpredictable, unreliable witches. Let's say I need to start speaking to some people that we have no reason to trust you cannot come with me and I will tell you why. I will tell you why. Many spells and curses require either or and sometimes both the name and face of a person. And so, so long as they don't have your face, we're safe. If Let's say I did confront a witch that I didn't realize I had annoyed or maybe they thought I had something to say at some point, or maybe they were just bored and they want to stir up trouble, or maybe they hate werewolves, baby, or maybe they hate non-magical people, sweetheart. You know, if we talk to someone that just decides not to like us, and you know, these things, people are can be so unfair. These things happen every day. Think back on how many times people chose not to like you for arbitrary reasons that were of no threat to them, right? You just... <sighs> You can't, I can't send you into the line of fire and I can't risk anybody hurting you. It's simply, it's just simply for showing up, let alone without protections. Now, this is where I start to, I'm going to talk backwards a little bit here. I'm going to not talk backwards, but I'm going to unpack this a bit. Yes, there are protections. As a matter of fact, we're going to talk to my friend about that too. We can guard you to a degree with some protections, but the reason I don't want to rely on those protections is because protections are unreliable and you're a brand new practitioner. And oftentimes protections are only as powerful as the person who understands, you know, how, how to weaponize that power, that magic. And you're just going to be starting on this supernatural exploration. And sure, somebody trustworthy can endow you with protections. But even then, the protections are going to be far more sustainable if the, if the person themselves who is protected understands how to maintain said protections. And that simply isn't our knowledge bank yet, sweetheart. And that simply isn't your experience yet. It's just risky. Protections are risky. They are very important. You know, they're certainly, <laughs> they're certainly important, but they are risky nonetheless. It's not a fail safe. You know, it's, it's not a guaranteed. I couldn't guarantee that even with all the protections in the world, that a particularly baneful witch wouldn't be able to burst through those protections or work around those protections, especially because we don't know what we're dealing with. And that would be different too, babe. If we knew for sure that we were dealing with some kind of magic or some kind of spell, well, then we could be very specific about the protection to work with and so that you can be a part of that journey with me and, you know, potentially find yourself in harm's way. But come out the other side all right but we just don't I don't know that we'll ever have I don't know that we'll have that specificity until we reach until we get to the very bottom of this issue and by then you may have already been harmed see what I'm saying where the people that we meet 
on the journey and trying to figure out what's happening, what to do. So what I'm trying to say is it's, we're going to have to play it by ear and it's going to have to be situational. There are situations such as with friends that I do trust you're being involved with. And I think that could be really special to you. And that can be special to me to have you with me too. Of course it would be. It's good to have your support and your company. <laughs> I like you and I care about you and I care to empower you. I think this exploration of the supernatural world can be empowering to you. And I want that for you. But that being said, it can also be dangerous. And we just need to, maybe you're going to have to trust me. I've been a werewolf my whole life. We'll start with my friend. We'll start there. And until then, we can study up. You can ask me whatever questions you've got. And we can cuddle. <laughs> you also are not obligated to see about any of these adventures. I promise you, I wouldn't. I've, I've got no. How do I put this? It's not that I don't care that you be more a part of my life, but I understand that this part of my life is overwhelming. So take it slow. <laughs> Watch your mental health. Like I said last night, we can only be happy if the two of us as individuals are happy. I want you to be happy. Uh, speaking of which, I'd impress you with my exceptional coffee brewing skills and However, alas, I don't have opposable thumbs at the moment. <laughs> I can catch you something, though. What you feeling? A rabbit? <laughs> Squirrel? Chipmunk? Buffalo? Whatever. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> I can pick you some veggies, too. I bet I can pick you some carrots out the ground or... <laughs> cabbage heads yeah I got big jowls I can just rip it out rip it out the dirt like that and uh, <laughs> apples would be tricky picking apples up, but I think I could work it out so maybe <laughs> you want to send me out on some fresh produce delivery chores I can do that famously mm-hmm I am going to make you get me a, a bowl of water or something because I refuse to drink out of the toilet. <laughs> werewolves have standards. We love dogs, but standards are questionable. Werewolves, however, <laughs> we are <laughs> bougie. <laughs> bougie beasts. <laughs> yeah, I'd appreciate a human bowl. Thank you. I'd, I'd appreciate a nice human bowl of water <laughs> you're very very sweet thank you yeah whatever if you want to whip anything up I'd be curious to see exactly how skilled you are at cooking I think you'd be cute in the kitchen <laughs> no I mean it you're so cute You know, it's amazing. I'm thinking back on my life experience as a werewolf. And it, not once, not once have I been a werewolf with humans. I mean, I've certainly had my interactions, but I've never, I mean, I didn't have the, the talk feature, you know, I couldn't communicate as a person. And so it was always just a lot easier to play with my werewolf friends while we were all wolves on wolf days 
And then otherwise, when we're all people, I mean, sure, some of them, some of them and I are really close. So even on non-werewolf days, you know, we'll get a cup of coffee and catch up or we'll do a movie night, etc. I mean, I have some really good friends that are werewolves that I don't just abandon when we're not in our wolf forms. You know, we do people things too. But as far as my people friends are concerned, I've never had the privilege of sharing this with them and not only is this the first time I've shared my whole self with a people, with like a non-werewolf people friend, but non-supernatural friend. A lot of my witch friends know. That's been hard sometimes, that conversation, because unfortunately, you know, so many people are just so senseless and they have their conditioned biases here and there or choose their biases here and there. And, you know, it's like being a person sharing arbitrary factors about yourself that don't hurt anyone and yet some people choose to you know choose to threaten you for those things and the the world is very senseless today I wish that someday it could be different but our social lives are exceptionally unpredictable Mm -hmm. So at least with my werewolf friends, for the most part, at least as far as the werewolf thing is concerned, I felt I could be safe. But even then, some of them I don't trust in their people forms to accept me for who I am. Otherwise, other than being a wolf, you know, it's it's just as complicated to navigate the social supernatural field as it is to navigate the social non-supernatural field. And it is annoying But that just makes for moments like these. That just makes for relationships like these. Here's looking at you. (laughs) In which you can be your full self without fear. It just makes people like you and relationships like these all the more special and cherished. And, you know, all the more impressive and exceptional you know and yeah sure that should probably you know we're talking bare minimums here at least they should be but we're coming to learning that they're not you know the fact that (sighs) the fact that I can feel safe with you just for in being just in being a rare and beautiful thing <laughs> is it weird though is it, it's a little weird right <laughs> is this how you expected is this at all how you expected the first night i would stay with you <laughs> our very first cuddle up our very first morning together I'm just going to go out on a limb and say probably not. (laughs) You sure are cute in the mornings. Yeah, you're cute otherwise, but you're extra cute in the mornings. (laughs) That's a good thing, believe me. It's, It's really good. I can get used to this. <laughs> Not just as a wolf. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, I don't want us to rush things. It's going to feel different when I'm in people form again, you know? And I think it's important that we acknowledge exactly, you know, the unique intricacies <laughs> that's going to have to be this relationship. And, Certain things are going to be different, feel different when I'm in different forms. Maybe not forever, but at first, sure. As a wolf, I can very much get used to this with you. Hopefully, I won't be in this form much longer. Hopefully, Ugh. once I, once I can get out and up. I'm tired, but I'm thinking once I can start my day, I get to the, see my friend right away. Like I said, you're more than invited. Um, 
that doesn't make sense. You're more than invited. No, there's a, you're more than welcome is what I was going for. <laughs> I've got wolf brain. Cut me a break. Cut me some slack. I'm in wolf brain right now. English is hard. So that's a true statement, by the way, it is. Um, I lost my train of thought. So once we get our day started, you're more than welcome to come with me. If you're busy, don't even worry about it. I will fill you in on everything you missed. And from there, we'll take it case by case, okay? Oh, man, I got to... I gotta file down these claws. Yeah, you just find like a rock or something and file them down. <laughs> yeah, you can do them if you want. <laughs> You're so funny. Yeah, that would be different. <laughs> that would be unique. It would be fun. You're so playful. I like how playful you are. Yeah, I'm pretty playful too, so I think we're well matched in that regard, in that department. You know, it'll be odd though. We figure out what's going on and I can get back to normal. Wolf during full moon, human otherwise. It'll be weird not to be able to speak to you in my wolf form. Again, that'll be weird and it'll be difficult for you too, maybe. So we'll have to be really good about figuring out, you know, how maybe you can still be a part of my wolf experience whilst understanding that communication will be stunted, you know, and that could be really hard. What if there's something I really want to share with you and I know I got to wait <laughs> until the sun comes up? Well, I guess it's not terribly long. Oh, it's just one of those really, um, irrational fears of mine it's you hear stories about people in a coma right and they hear everything and they want to say things to the people that are speaking to them and I, I read this crazy story about this girl who discovered while she was in a coma that I forget which parent it was but one of her parents was cheating they were having affairs and she desperately wanted to tell her other parent but she couldn't and she eventually obviously did come out of her coma and told her story but you know stuff like that just sounds like a circle of hell to me to desperately need to use your voice especially in regard to taking care of someone that you love and you can't do it oh that just feels terrifying to me and, and frankly that's one of the reasons I do have a couple I'm really really lucky I have some wonderful wonderful friends and I've got a couple of non-supernatural people friends that I could probably share this with but that's I think the reason I haven't is I'm like, for what? So that when I'm a wolf, I can just not be able to communicate my needs, cater to their needs. You know, what if there's a miscommunication? What if something happens and they get scared or I, or you know, what if there's a miscommunication and waiting for that sun to rise just is not the best option. It's, it would be brutal, brutal to wait that out. Or what if something is like an immediate pressing matter? What if I discover something and I need to tell them right away and I just cannot figure out how to do so. I'm, you know, it's, I know I'm probably overthinking it all, but I am a werewolf. <laughs> There's a lot on my plate. Okay. There's a lot to consider. And a lot of risk to evaluate is what it all comes down to at the end of the day. You know what they say about great power comes great responsibility and I'm just trying to do justice to the responsibility required here at least in my opinion required here of having supernatural power you want to lay here just a little longer yeah. <laughs> oh, you're good, baby. You can go ahead and pet me. It's <laughs> it's nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're so good at that too. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I'd pet you, but again, thumbs, not my strength at the moment. <laughs> You're really special, you know that. Just a couple more minutes. And then I really could use a bowl of water, please, and thank you. <laughs> I accept. <laughs> hmm. 